So my name is uh, Ke Wang. So I'm a new assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. So solely also that, that each equipment in my lab is still under warranty. <laughs> so <coughs> uh, yes, which is, which is very true. So I have two parts. Basically, one part is like a, a you know, twist. Another part is actually have nothing to do with twist, but uh, mostly a gatefine nanostructure. That's uh, where like, uh, basically I started to do since my um, like, uh, PhD, but in a very different system. But now I, I do it in uh, 2D materials. So the first one is like a uh, twisted trilayer graphene, more of more uh, super lattices. So, uh, you know, if you have been paying attention to any of the talk uh, today, uh, you don't need me to introduce this uh, again. So I'll, I'll just skip this. So basically, uh, to quickly recap, you know, magic happens in those systems, and superconductivity happens, and then multi interior state happens. Okay, what's important here is like a basic is idea of the Moray super lattice because all of these interesting states, either uh, multi interior states or like uh, this uh, uh, superconductivity are found near uh, this uh, half building uh, corresponding to like uh, two electrons per Moray uh, unit cell. So this unit cell is actually much larger uh, than of course the, the graphene unit cell and uh, which normally correspond to an order of 10 to the 12th uh, like a, a carrier density for uh, for like a two electron per Morel Euler cell. So what we were trying to do uh, starting last year is like a building this Morel Morel super lattice. So basically, you know, it's just uh, we start with a twisted bilayer, but then we add a third layer uh, with the same twist angle. So it's a continuous twist. Uh, basically, uh, so we're not twisting it back. So uh, what? Uh, so basically, the way we do it is like we start with top, top bar nitrogen, we find a really, really large and clean um, monolayer graphene that is on the order of like uh, 100 uh, micron. So it's really hard to find, but uh, we can find it with some effort. And then we just tear it into three pieces uh, so that we know those three pieces have the same lattice direction with respect to each other, and we continuously twist them uh, with respect to each other. And uh, the stack is actually end up to be uh, quite big, and then uh, through experience, we gradually learn like we cannot afford to make the sample too large, because as Andre uh, also like uh, correctly pointed out, the, there's some like angle homogeneity, and we found in this trilayer, it's you know as you would expect, it's even worse. So, uh, in order to see anything that uh, you know has a reasonable homogeneous angle, you really need to, uh, despite we have a very large stack, we need to etch it into different uh, pieces, uh, which is just on the order of few. Micron. Okay, so uh, so what's nice about this uh, Moray system? You can think it as if you only have a, like a, a you know a graphene lattice. You know your lattice constant is about like a few angstrom, and now you add another layer. You have a Moray super lattice. Then it's r with a, within the uh, around this magic angle, you roughly you know like a, have a lattice constant. Now it's like a ten times larger, so a few nanometer. Uh, with the third layer, it's about like a, at least in our system where we. Uh, uh, aim to have like a three degree. It's like around the, like a basic tens of nanometer. So we're looking for the evidence of like a half filling or the insulator states uh, that corresponding to the filling of more real more super lattice. Uh, as you can expect, because of the size of this. Uh, uh, second order more real more super lattice now is 100 times larger. So the density you expected to see those uh, insulating behavior, you know, as we, 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 we expected would be like a ten, even 10 times slower at the, at the order of magnitude of a 10 to the 10th. So uh, yesterday, you know, there's an important point that I need to make is like a basically we noticed, uh, so there are more, more uh, you know, traditionally this field started with like a more real super lattice, but now there are more people interested in this second order, more real, more real super lattices. So we just recently learned it's not just uh, graphene on graphene on graphene. You can actually do this with boron nitride, graphene and boron nitride with some uh, great talk that, that was given yesterday. So a few of us last night were discussing, like, it's, up, uh, it's about time for us to come up with a uh, Right name for this, uh, uh, for this, uh, uh, for this system. You know, so I personally, or oh, despite we we put it in this, uh, uh, like a uh, paper that we recently have, like I personally do not like the name of Morel Morel Superlattice for two reasons. Like uh, first of all, Morel Morel is a little bit wordy, and we referred it to the in our like uh, paper about 50 times of it. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, and that's like one tenth of the entire length of our paper. So, and, and <coughs> so that's a, you know, it's about time you would think like for us to come up with some you know abbreviations. And second, you know, super lattice is not even accurate, right? This is not super lattice. This is actually second order super lattice or super lattice or super lattice. So the word super really doesn't cut the essence of it. Uh, 
So I give it a lot of thought last night, and then I believe I come up with the right name that is both concise, strong, and uh, accurately describe this. So I, I don't care what you call it in the future, but at least for this talk, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to refer it to as the super duper mom. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah, if you think about it, it's not that bad, right? So, second order of a super, right? And more real marine, and, and it's short, just two words, okay? So, we, in the beginning, we do not know how to, you know, uh, we do not know what the magic angle of, of our mom should be, but, uh, um, but then, like, uh, we made about, like, a 20 or 30 sample, and uh, from all kinds of angle, from one degree to five degree until, you know, one of them uh, sort of hit the mark at uh, like a three degree. So what we see here is like a pretty much similar, if you have been paying attention to any of the uh, data shown like earlier today, it's like a similar, like you have two domes that seems to reach zero, and then you have some insulating states, and it start to be insulating in, in terms of like a temperature dependence starting at like a three or four degree. Uh, in between, so everything seems very familiar except like uh, the, basically the, the carrier density range here is like uh, on the two order of magnitude smaller, okay, which we will later show that this really corresponds to the more real mirror feeling. So we do have like a temperature cautious that actually goes flat and we have like a, you know, a symmetric, uh, like a differential resistance against the bias. So we show as also like a way change temperature, uh, the, dip, uh, the IV curve uh, goes from linear uh, to uh, to qubit, and it crosses the uh, qubit around 3.4 degree. So this is the expectation that uh, you can get from a BKT uh, of a disordered uh, like 2D superconductor. But then, yes? If I uh, right. say that the heating of the device goes like I squared, right? Okay, and then I try to map I squared, uh, is there like a single parameter <coughs> fit to T? Is it possible that this is not a superconductor at all? Well, it is. Because um, that's like 200, you know, it's, it's quite a lot of current, right? Yeah, so as, as, as. And maybe more importantly, actually, if you go to a higher magnetic field, right. particularly in-plane magnetic field, right. does the critical current go down? So we did not try the in-plane magnetic field yet, so we're, we're doing that experiment right now, so this is still fairly, fairly new. But to answer your question uh, directly, you know, as Nike has always taught us, you know, nothing is impossible. So, and, and we're, we're, we're obviously going to look for it, like, uh, but, uh, you know, um, yeah. So we're trying to actually look for the Fernhofer pattern, uh, actually deep into this, uh, 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 like, uh, this dome. Uh, but then, like, I'll show, like, they basically look like, uh, because of the complicacy of uh, the magnetotransport data, it's very difficult to resolve something, but we did not try at the, at the edge of the dome, but we're currently trying. So this is, a, this is the first sample out of this 30 attempt. Uh, that's the current sem uh, only sample we have right now, but we're in the process of making more. So, so trying to. Let me just ask the question again. Right. So at 100 millitesla, what does that look like? What does that lower plot there look like? What is the lower plot? Tesla out of plane. This one? The, yeah, yeah, does this quote unquote critical current get smaller? It does get smaller, yeah. But, uh, but that doesn't. Okay. Uh, we did not uh, we did not plot that in the paper, but uh, but it does we do have that data. You know, I can I can I can ask my student to send it to me and, and, and pull up. Field scale of which what would you say is the out of plane HC if you want to call it that? So I'll show it to okay. the next. But but you know um, I'm I'm cautious of calling it HC because we really do not understand our magnetic data. As you go see, it's very complicated. But but if you were to you know to directly answer your question, like if you were to take IV curve. And does you know this JC? You, if you call that JC, it does get smaller when you go to higher magnetic field out of plane. Just so I'm following, this is yeah. trilayer graphing with two twists. Yeah, okay. like a two some two consecutive twist. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. so more real more real. Yes. Okay. So um, okay. So that part, of course, like uh, as Andrea uh, Andre correctly pointed out, you know, so. You know, there are, there are maybe, so we're, we're looking for other evidence that makes this a stronger case that is superconductor. But for now, you know, to make everybody happy, we can just go with, you know, or maybe a superconductor or maybe not, okay? But what we are you know, more confident about is the feeling of Moray or Moray. So this is, uh, uh, you know, has nothing to do with superconductivity. But uh, we do find that like uh, at even feelings, um, uh, at the zero, zero, zero carrier density, or carrier density correspond to half building, you see this mode insulator state, or insulating behavior. Okay, none of this is very insulating, actually. And, uh, and uh, what is different is like at the full filling, you do not see this to be 
uh, you do not see a strong insulating behavior, unlike uh, uh, twisted binary case. In, in fact, it's actually a little bit mechanic uh, in a sense. And this is uh, because those the band structure of twisted binary and the twisted trilayer are fundamentally, dif are fundamentally different from each other. For twisted bilayer, you know, you actually have a gap. So this is without relaxation, but if you include relaxation, you have a gap here as well. So you do expect to see an insulating case. But uh, uh, you know, so Yu Hu, who is our uh, collaborator uh, from Tim Kakshur's group, did this calculation for us for this continuous twist, uh, twisted trilayer graphene sample, where. Um, Basically, you know, like uh, there's no way. Basically, what they're showing—that's that's the most important part that you can get uh, any insulating gap in between. Basically, so so this is sort of consistent. So and, uh, uh, and, and that's that. Okay. So so one thing that I need to uh, you know emphasize here, like uh, you know, spend one side one slide like uh, talking about is like the quality of our sample is actually uh, reasonably good. So one way that you can look at the quality of the sample is by looking at the weights of the charging neutrality point. Uh, or, or like it's on the order of like a 10 to the 10th. Uh, so it's not, uh, you know, it's reasonably good. And to give, uh, you know, general audience, especially for series students, uh, what it means, uh, basically I want to give you a quick rundown of what uh, a graphene sample at different density look like <laughs> uh, in, in real world, okay. So if you think about, so what's a graphene as a zero sort of approximation? Uh, so if we plot out the graphene sample as a function of density, so if you are, at active charge density, you're heavily p-doped. If you're at a positive charge density, you're heavily n-doped. And then um, this x-axis is just a, a real world coordinate from left to right. So the graphene uh, in, in experiments really look like this, basically. So <coughs> if you go to heavily um, p-doped, it's just a purely, you know, meat. And then if you go to heavily n-doped, it's just a purely, uh, you know, like a fat. But what is interesting is basically all these Dirac fluid states and also this water insulator state happens at uh, normally around the, the density where there you have actually uh, like a, a, what we call a charging neutrality point. So in theory, a charging neutrality point, at charging neutrality point, basically you should have neither hole or electron. Okay, but uh, in fact, because of this disorder, at charging neutrality point, you have both electron and hole. Okay, there's just the, the total density of the sample is zero. Uh, but you actually have alternating region of electrons <laughs> and holes that forms like the, the so-called electron hole puddle. Okay, so uh, if you have a really disordered sample, uh, which is but if you just put a graphene on silicon oxide, you effectively get something look like a ribeye stick that you have like this, uh, you know, like this electron hole puddle so large that can cut off your entire sample. So your uh, transport is dominated by the pin junction turn-oning, accidental turn-oning, or percolation. Uh, transport and you effectively get a very wide Dirac peak and very very resistive. Uh, so if you encapsulate that, uh, however, if you don't, uh, you, you learn all your encapsulation technique. Uh, you did not learn the inca encapsulation technique from, let's say, Philip or, or Andre or Corey or all of those guys who knows what they're doing. You learn all of this encapsulation, uh, let's say, from a YouTube video. Uh, so your, your, your sample will be re still reasonably quality, but you know, it's probably, there's still room for improvement. So it will look like something called a Wagyu beef. Basically, uh, Wagyu is a Japanese uh, word for like a, a slow flake. So you will have a occasional uh, electron hole particles and the size of them are uh, much smaller. Uh, you know, and uh, as a result, like uh, your theoretic peak is much narrower. So, so what is the state of art? Uh, is basically if you want to test what the state of art look like, you should go to the penthouse on the Beaver Hills, not too far from here. And they sell this like off their menu. Uh, you need to ask for it, like a triple A grade Wagyu beef. Okay, so it's 120 bucks for eight ounces, but it's totally worth it. Uh, you know, you, when you take the first cut of this, and it looks like just boring lean meat. But until you take your first bite, okay, it melts in your mouth, and you can clearly tell it's half meat, half fat. But you just don't know where the fat comes from. That is because the electron hole part is so small that it is beyond your optical limit of your eye. Okay, but you know, so this this is pretty much the, the state of art if you know what you are doing with the with the, with the, with the encapsulation. So normally, you know, uh, you know. Uh, so again, like I didn't watch your YouTube video, so I was opposed to with Philip, so I learned. The right of doing it, and uh, you know, basically the point is like uh, the the width of the uh, Dirac point being like an order of ten to the tenth is is reasonable quality. So the reason why I want to emphasize this quality is like uh, reasonable is because I'm gonna 
I'll show you some math, uh, exactly as Andre asked. So first of all, I want to go to show you, basically, this is the highest density or safe density that we normally go with like 80 volts silicon backgate. Or you can go slightly higher, but we, we didn't go. The point is, like, uh, for one thing, it's, like it's quite uh, boring outside of this, uh, this extreme proximity of their charging neutrality. So it's, there's nothing really going on there. If you're zooming a little bit, so yeah, again, uh, we do not define this as uh, you know HC, but you do see like uh, this, you know this this thing getting like a narrower and narrower. Um, and another thing is like we're trying to identify basically if we can see some satellite fan coming from like a different uh, even feelings. Uh, however, we were not able to do it because probably because there's like a, some angle inhomogeneity, which we do have a good characterization in the next slide, which we'll talk about. <coughs> Uh, the point is like uh, you know the, the the naive understanding of this is basically uh, long of these like uh, things that seems like a fan or whatever it is uh, actually can trace back to uh, like a few single origins. Uh, our our guess is basically because like this Mori or Mori is highly incommunicated, and if you even have a slight angle change, is a, a signature periodicity change like a significantly, and you have really a lot of length scale. Uh, therefore, like uh, it shows you a mess. So what we did showing our supermentary is like, uh, okay, it's a little bit hard to see. If you really zoom in, so this corresponds to you know, a zero field that we know for sure. At the nuke to, this is basically fulfilling minus four, fulfilling <coughs> four, and uh, and then this is charging neutral point. So if you look really carefully, you might be able to see some of this uh, this thing coming out. But really, the resolution of this uh, uh, picture is highly limited. Basically. Even in the highest quality sample that we can make, or, or, or other people can make, really, uh, you cannot get the SDH. Uh, basically, this is what, what it is. The peak of the SDH to be any narrower than 10 to the 10th. You can do it probably a little bit better, but not the order of magnitude better than this. So basically, despite we have a lot of data points, like we scan this for, for really long, you know, you are fundamentally limited by the disorder level of the state of our sample, basically. So really, like uh, all of these shows, like just like a blob, simply because the density range we're looking at is really, really small, and it's. Uh, so we're not claiming anything out of this, but you know, this is a magneto, and these are our attempt to do magnetic transport, but it's hard to. This is magnetic field and that's yeah. the Yeah, yeah, on this, on is, the right this is, yes, yeah, this is magneto. Oh, that, that's right, the, this is all magnetic field, yes. This is a really rooming of, uh, of, of this part of it. it it's just, uh, you know, very complicated and we're not trying to claim anything out of this, yeah. Sorry, this is a really yes. question, but besides the fact that you attempted to make a moray of moray. Yes. What is actually the evidence that there is a moray of moray? So I thought it's, uh, uh, it's this, basically. You have like this nuclear four, uh, uh, like basically half filling, um, and two electron per moray of moray. <laughs> and uh, but, basically, um, yeah. So, but there's not any evidence that there's a fan feature associated with any of those four. So it's, uh, th I mean, that. How, how do you know that those aren't kind of, you just made something very disordered, and it, you know, there are a bunch of features there. Right. So somehow so you're asking to take like kind of a Fourier transform of that, yeah. and thinking that there should be a sharp peak that's something that's periodic. Right. Right. From that one curve, is that right? Like that. That's no. So we we cut this at different temperatures, basically. Yeah. So we think like uh, first of all, like uh, uh, let's go back to the previous one. So not only that we see those peaks, then those peaks. So it relies on the fact that basically the green minimum. Yeah. The orange minimum and the right. blue minimum are at a ratio of two to one in density. That's the right. That's the no, no, no. It's that's it, why it, you think there's there's a, there's, there's, a there's also like a, this is a, this this density matches with our expectation of the size of the Mori of Mori unit cell. So we do uh, like actually you can extract the from the peak position and in terms of density you can track the. You can extract the angle that to be about 3.1. That's exactly what we're trying to hit. You know, so we'll extremely low density. Yeah. Extremely low density. And yeah. You know the. You think you have accurate mechanical control over. Control. Yes, I, I'll show you. Like uh, so, not <coughs> accurate in a sense of a plus minus 0.2 degree. So which which is consistent with what people you know slightly bigger than what people can do with a twisted bilayer. And so to make this structure, what are the two twist angles? So this is 3.1 degree. Uh, 3.1 yes. and something very close to 3.1. Oh, we, we tried 3.1, 3.1. That's, yeah. that's what we, we, we aim to do. Okay, then with string and then, there, as we will show, there is some sort of like, a, a, you know, 
like inhomogeneities. Yes. So, that, so that's the reason why you don't see any additional super lattice peaks on this 3.1 with the gang. 3.1. You, know, you, you can't. That's hard to fill that whole unit cell and see the full filling. What, what do you mean? So this so is full filling. This is full filling. Full filling of the more and more yeah. But should you not also have some electronic structure feature at full filling of one of each of you know around where you'd be commensurate with filling a 3.1? Yeah, that would be at a very big like a uh, very big density. We're not sure like what's in. Experiment at like two. Yeah, we have. Two and two. We have done all kinds of yeah. angles. Then do, you, like then do you actually see the main moiré, if you want to call it that, or the, the smaller wave? You see like so we we have we have other other sample. Yes, there are some sample we only see moiré of layer one and layer two, or like you know just out of two layers. There are also yeah we have a bunch of samples like uh, like twenty, but the, the only sample that we clear the reason why we are reporting only this sample is like uh, it you know it, that's the only thing that this thing. You know whether it's a superconductivity or not. Uh, like uh, this is the only sample. Like only at a three degree, uh, this reaches zero. Okay, so that's why uh, this is the most interesting uh, sample for us. But uh, yeah, we do see in different samples that uh, with different angles, as you will see, uh, we will see this like a more real. Yeah, this uh, this insulating states at like a minus four, minus two, plus two, plus four, but uh, at very different densities. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, where I was, okay, so I had this. Yeah, anyway, so, yeah, we, we cannot claim that, but, uh, you know, you can weakly see there's uh, maybe three fan if you, if, you, if you want to be friendly to me, and if you be very imaginative, like me, I, I am. But anyway, so it's, uh, it's hard, it's because, like, they are really close in density, and this, this, it's really hard to resolve, like, uh, uh, through transport, like, with this, such an extremely small, like, a density range, and everything is highly resolution limited by, by disorder or, or whatever you call it. Okay, so so this is uh, you know this is what uh, you know so some so basically again like uh, uh, similar to twisted bilayer graphene right. So this is a sample that is uh, basically from the same stack but a few uh, micron away. Okay, so in this sample is basically uh, it's not 3.1 anymore. It's 3.3. So we, we aim to have 3.1, but then because of a disorder or like a, or, or angle disorder, whatever you call it, like in homogeneity, you get like a 3.3 degree. So uh, in this sample, as, uh, as uh, you know, to answer and, and, and this uh, question, basically you also see those, uh, uh, these even feelings, but uh, this thing never even get close to, uh, to like a being zero resistance. So um, to also answer another load, you know, although we cannot uh, conclusively prove it, but uh, you know, this is from the same sample, <laughs> and we measure the contact quality to be the same around the, you know, they're all like a few ohm, uh, each contact of this, you know, uh, you know, if it's from, you know, as trivial as heating, which it could be, okay, but you know, at, at least this sample doesn't show anything close to, to what we have seen, you know, for the same stack and same contact quality, a um, you know, few micron away, so. But again, like it, can't, it cannot completely rule out, you know. Uh, well, you know, but uh, you know, the point is like uh, uh, I personally do not believe this can be explained by you know just contact quality heating up things, but whatever. Anyway, so uh, well, this is also like a, a very similar to the observation that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Corey Dings group that uh, recently uh, pointed out in this like they actually change the twist angle. So they show that for a wide range of twist angles, they actually see a multi insular state. And only for like a specific angle, they see something that uh, again looks like a superconductivity. Or oh, I don't I don't remember if they actually claim superconductivity. Okay, so this is consistent with what we see as well. You know, it's uh, it seems to be harder to see something uh, have a resistance reaching zero than uh, to see uh, insulating states basically. And of course, like an entry. Uh, recently had this beautiful work showing like those two things may not even be connected, which, which then, you know, basically anything can happen. Okay, so, so basically, yeah, uh, in, in a lot of our sample, we have other angles as well. It's very easy to see these, uh, these four, uh, like even feeling states, but uh, uh, it's very difficult to see uh, something reaching zero. Okay, so uh, all of them, like the contact quality are, are quite nice, actually. But anyway, so, the ongoing work that we are trying to do right now is like, a, you know, because this, we realize this twisted trilayer is an extremely complicated system. So these are all unpublished work, but uh, we're hoping to wrap up soon. It's like we want to uh, carefully characterize the Moray band evolution of this uh, twisted trilayer with displacement field 
So I've done in your data, well, we're still mirroring it. We also have like uh, this uh, uh, experiment that uh, using like a two pin junction to uh, uh, through transport, trying to characterize the interlayer screening because unlike a twisted bilayer graphene, you know your top layer. If you have a twisted trilayer, the top layer is screened by two layers of graphene. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's not negligible. So when we are considering the band structure, maybe that's something that we need to understand. And we do show like it actually do play a little bit of role, uh, but we're trying to quantify it. And then we also made a sample that we're trying to change like a twist angle continuously with a lot of uh, local LALO gates that we can sample each of the region with different angle very separately. And we do see like uh, the density of states like evolves as expected. Uh, but, but then again, like a lot of this work is unfinished, so, so, so I'm not ready to talk about this, just to give you a sense of what's the direction we're trying to go for. And another step for this sample is, of course, like uh, as Andrew correctly pointed out, the next step for us is like uh, trying to make this fully graphicated. And, uh, and also allow us to do display and field dependence and, uh, and trying to study uh, these like uh, more real, more insulator state more. Uh, okay, so that's the next step. Okay, the summary and uh, so the part more. Okay, I have time, uh, great. Okay, so the part two uh, of my, uh, my talk, you know, which I should uh, go uh, slightly faster is like a gating fine one row lava structure. So I actually come from a background of gating fine nano structure in Galilean Arsenine and silicon. So now I'm trying to do this in one row material. And um, so one of my career goal is to try to build a quantum computer on 2D material uh, before I die, basically. So you know, I know it sounds crazy, but I did say before I die. So it's a, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a challenging project, but uh, you know, <coughs> one step at, at a time. Like uh, maybe hopefully we can get there. So the way uh, you know, the first starting point, of course, is the qubit or the quantum bit. Basically, just a quantum two-level system. There are many ways that you can realize a quantum two-level system in quantum matter systems. But the point is, like, if you wanted to be a qubit, you you better have like a full control over it, basically. So the way we do it, or, or I'm trying to do it, is this so-called lost dimensional qubit, basically through quantum dots. Okay, you start with a two-dimensional electron gas. Uh, previously, all of this started with Galen Einstein, but now you can do it with the 2D material uh, with some trick. Uh, what you do is like uh, you apply elective, or you make a lot of these nano gates, and you apply elective gate voltage on these gates. So you effectively deplete all the electron under this, these gates by pushing this Fermi level into the gap, and you effectively isolate the two zero-dimensional electron gas uh, that is fully tunable in size and also the thermal coupling in between them. Is there TMDs or bilayer? Yes, TMD. Uh, uh, okay. bilayer, TMD is better uh, because bilayer graphene, uh, you can open a gap, that gap is not, uh, not, not large enough. Uh, because, you can easily, because not only you want to deplete, but you also want to move around. For bilayer graphene, it's easier for you to move, move to the other side and become <laughs> conducting again. You know? mm -hmm. so, so TMD is, is, is better, yes. That, 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 that's, 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 a, that's a very good point. So, yeah, so basically, like, uh, you know, once you have this quantum dot, you can apply more and more electric gate voltage on these gates and push out the electron one by one until there's only one electron on the left and one electron on the right. You effectively define an artificial uh, hydrogen molecule, except the size of each hydrogen atom you can con uh, you know, control like, uh, with gate voltage. And also, you can control the separation between the uh, two hydrogen atoms. So it's a completely controllable, like, uh, uh, like a artificial atom uh, or, or molecule. So what we did like uh, uh, in my PhD is like we did a bunch of this in Galen Arsenal and the silicon. Uh, one of the big uh, good example I want to give to people is like uh, this uh, charge qubit. So we, we also can do singular triplet qubit, but it's uh, harder to ex explain that. So uh, we have uh, such a good control over the system. Basically, if you may, you can actually uh, access all the like uh, occupancy. Basically, those two numbers correspond to how many electrons you have on the left and how many electrons <coughs> you have on the right. We have something called charge sensor, which I cannot go to detail. That you can actually fully confidently map out, uh, you know, how many charge you have in each of the dots. So a charge qubit is defined as a one zero to zero one transition. Basically, you only have one electron in the entire system, and you define your qubit zero and one state as a one zero state or zero one states, basically. Uh, the way you tune like uh, these, these states is basically you can 
actually fully tune the energy splitting between those two states by simply tuning the uh, confinement potential. So if you tune the confinement potential like this, the ground state of course becomes zero one because the electron wants to go to the right side. It's a lower energy state. Vice versa, you can tune it back with just a small change in voltage. And the interlayer coupling, which is actually you know, of the diagonal Hamiltonian of this two by two Hamiltonian, is just controlled by those two center gates. If you apply more negative voltage on these gates, you establish a higher barrier. And eventually, you have this, uh, what, this what we've shown, that this transition from run zero state to zero one state becomes sharper and sharper due to the reduced hybridization between the two electron wave functions. So this is to show like, uh, you know, basically, basic idea of quantum computing. Of course, it's much more complicated than that. But uh, the basic idea is like you need to have full control over your system. Uh, th that is, OK. So why do we want to do in one row material things like in silicon and gallium arsenide it works so well? It's because you know, in silicon and gallium arsenide, you have this beautiful qubit. But unfortunately, uh, you know, they are just a bunch of lonely qubits that uh, they cannot really talk to each other very effectively. The reason for that is like uh, so far the most popular way of coupling two qubits, or low stimulant jingle qubit together, is just you make those double quantum dots right next to each other, and hopefully the current coupling, uh, you know, gives you some sort of a correlation. But unfortunately, no matter how good you are with this uh, lithography, you know, they are a few hundred nanometer apart, and also there's a lot of screening in plan. Therefore, the coupling is really, really weak. So people have shown you can do logic gating, you can do entangling, but you know it happens every once in a hundred tries. So, so it's not really very useful. But in one row material, you can actually stack them on top of each other and have a really strong vertical coupling because there won't be any turn on it if you put even just a five monolayer of a boron nitride in between. So it's very strong and literally like a strongest. Uh, uh, a like capacitive coupling you can have between those like a single electrons without having any quantum turn on accidentally. And also you can f uh, have like a top quantum dot gate deposited on the top of bar nitride and bottom quantum gate deposited on the bottom of this uh, uh, pre-deposited on the silicon silicon oxide wafer. And beautiful, uh, the be beauty of this is like uh, those two gates are aligned and deposited on the same side of the silicon silicon oxide wafer. You know, I don't want to bore you with the details, but that's that. That makes it very easy to, to, to handle this, OK? So as, uh, as Professor McDonough correctly pointed out, the best material to do it is transition metal dichotomy <coughs> because it's a lateral, like a two-dimensional you know, semiconductor, have a large gap, and uh, it's just a very natural to work with. Um, you know, and also, in theory, it's a beautiful uh, uh, like a system because uh, for monolayer or trilayer, for any really ordinary materials because of the strong spin orbit coupling and the inversion symmetry breaking, you get this uh, spin valley lock band edges. So if you build a spin qubit, it can also be a, at the same time, it's a valley qubit at the, when you only have one electron around. So with valley, with, with valley playing a role in here, like or, or your spin valley being locked, you can expect the lifetime of the qubit being longer because it's harder to flip the Wendy, unless you have like an atomic defect that gives you such a large delta k leaded to, to drive intermediate scattering. Okay. <laughs> However, in the experiment, like uh, this material is known to uh, to be very difficult to work with because like it's hard to make a good low temperature contact, and also it's very uh, you know basically a low mobility. So um, in theory, it's good, but then in, among experimentalists, the TMDC is also known to truly stand for uh, the most defective crap, and. <coughs> But, but like uh, I spent several years with, uh, with Philip. Okay, that's what I did in his lab mainly. Okay, so uh, with some with some tricks like a basic careful encapsulation in glass box. Okay, you need to do all of the in glass box, and uh, and the LED illumination and also like atomically uh, clean gate. Uh, you can actually make it. Uh, Better. Okay, so now we, we're confident this is maybe perhaps decent. Okay, uh, and, and we have demonstrated. Okay, my time is up. Okay, we demonstrated everything that uh, that getting asked like people demonstrated. Uh, at least in terms of quantum dot level, you have this uh, CT behavior, quantum blockade, and uh, but this is uh, something like uh, for the first time, like in any material, like uh, you cannot do this in getting asked like. So people try to do this in getting asked like. They say oh, what we're trying is like uh, if you hit this semiconductor with uh, like a photon. You can generate an electron hole pair or like a temporarily. This is called exciton. If you have a free electron nearby, that is basically the electron in my quantum dot, it forms a trion state. And we're interested in trion state because it's not charge neutral, so you can still hope to confine it with the electrostatic potential. Okay, so in transition metal like hydrogenide, they simply have a much larger binding energy than than getting us uh, simply because this is a truly 2D material, so you <laughs> don't get as much in-plane screening. 
as uh, you would have in getting last night because they call it 2D in a sense of you only have one sub end. But uh, you know, it, y there's actually a wave function span in the z direction. So you do get a lot of screening that makes the current coupling in plane much weaker. And there's the same electrostatic potential that you are trying to establish the confinement of the triangle will actually dissociate before you can do anything. So, okay, so long story short, okay, we can confine, we can even change its lifetime. Uh, blah, 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 and everything. And then, so in my lab, now we got some funding to do, uh, not, not just TMD, we, we do it in monolayer graphene, binary graphene, but for different re reasons, like electron optics or, uh, or electronics uh, stuff. And, uh, and we have uh, probably a few more papers coming out in the, in, uh, in, uh, later this year, but not on twist. Okay, some, something. Just get defined on the structures where you, you, you'll see. Okay, and you know, um, oh, okay. So this is uh, things like I don't have time to talk about. So we're hiring po <laughs> postdocs. Okay, so so I, I know most of the, you know, students here are serious, but maybe perhaps you got bored of theory, or or you know someone who who is experimentalist. The point is like if you if you know, okay, uh, we're hiring postdocs, and you may heard this urban agent, which is unverified that you know. Assistant professors are generally more pushy. Uh, here you have nothing to worry about because at the University of Minnesota, we never push people. We only drive you to discover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. With that, we I acknowledge all my like uh, you know collaborators. Okay. Almost perfect timing. Okay.